forget what they are, but we can look them up really quick. Uh, let's see, where are we? Uh, okay, well, I don't want to log in. Uh, let's just look at it all the way down to the bottom. So on Tuesday at 2 p.m., I'll uh, be live streaming. That's after my office hours that day. So uh, keep that in mind if you want to watch live on YouTube. Uh, otherwise, I would highly encourage you to, uh, as, as review, uh, to do these yourself as well. I'm going to do the first four days with you. They are progressively harder, so the first day is probably not going to be that, uh, that difficult. Uh, but you can see that it's an advent calendar. Of course, it's the ninth, so all uh, the first nine days have been released here. Uh, you can go ahead and log in with your uh, GitHub account. Uh, that's what I've done, so it knows who I am. Uh, you can check out the leaderboards and even become, uh, and you can see that uh, you can get merchandise, right? And I'm not plugging them or anything. I just wanted to wear it uh, because I, I wanted to support them one year, so I bought uh, one of their sweatshirts. Uh, so let's go ahead. Each day there are two activities, uh, and uh, you get a, a star for each one. Uh, so it, it's usually the second activity. Well, the second activity has the same input. It's just a variation on the first activity. Uh, so uh, you know, they've also got a theme going on each year. Santa has become stranded at the edge of the solar system while delivering presents to other planets. To accurately calculate his position in space, safely align his warp drive, and return to Earth in time to save Christmas, he needs you to bring his, uh, his measurements from 50 stars. So in other words, we're going to be doing you know, 50 times 2, because uh, uh, 25 days of Christmas, 50 times 2 activities. Uh, and if you get all these stars, then, that, uh, then th this graphic will probably change and look really cool or something like the uh, previous years. Uh, so uh, we're going to start right here. Uh, at the first go, I have not done these, by the way, yet, because I wanted to do them in uh, as, as a live stream. So I might, at the, at, at the end of the semester, go back and do all the rest of the days, like last year. Uh, but at the first go, no go poll, uh, every uh, elf is go uh, in, until the fuel uh, counter upper. I don't know. That's really awkward. Uh, they haven't determined the amount of fuel required yet. So here's where the real uh, activity starts. Fuel required to launch a given module is based on its mass. Specifically to find the fuel required for a module, take its mass, divide by three, round it down, and subtract two. You can see a lot of these things are designed with C in mind because rounding down, that's kind of like truncation, right? So if we divide by three with just regular old integers, well then we're going to, uh, and uh, as long as the inputs are integers, then we won't need to be uh, actually round down, we'll just let t truncation take care of it for us. And then you subtract two. Uh, so for example, if a mass has 12, uh, divide by 3, you get 4. You don't have to round down on that because it's whole number. You subtract 2, though, and you get 2. Right? So input-output examples here, test cases that we can use to verify a program before we submit our answer. Because the thing about this uh, contest is that, you can, or th that it uh, throttles you. You can submit an answer, and then you have to wait another minute in order to submit another answer, because you can't just you know, uh, write a script, basically, to guess a million numbers all at once uh, and, and, and cheat at, at it. Uh, so we do, you, we do want to get the right answer on the first try, ideally. Uh, for a mass of 14, dividing by 3 and rounding up still yields 4, but it's 4.666 something. Uh, so the fuel required, but you round down, and then you subtract by 2, and you get 2 again. For a mass of 1969, the year that we landed on the moon, uh, the fuel required is 654 because we have to divide by 3. So uh, 1969 divided by 3, right? And if we truncate that, then we get 656 minus 2, 664, right? So you have to understand the pro problem before you start writing code here unless you, you want to be competitive about it, and then you risk getting the wrong answer on the first one. So what is the, the, the actual uh, 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 output that we want at the end is usually just one number. In this case, what is the sum of the fuel requirements for all the modules in your spacecraft? Uh, input is randomly generated for each user. There might be actually be a, you know, some fixed number of inputs that are correct, uh, inputs, uh, but you get a random version of it. Uh, so uh, the, your, my input is not going to be the same as your input, but you can see that there are a whole bunch of numbers here. I'm just going to go ahead and select them all. You know that, that they're all integers, too. Uh, and take them over to my text editor here. And oh, there are 100 numbers. Right? So what I'm going to want to do is probably write a loop here to process each one of these numbers. I could, of course, hard code them into my, uh, my program if I want to, but I want to use this as a review, too. So let's do some file I.O., similar to what you're doing right now in Hack 14. Uh, open up the, the file, read line by line. 
uh, put it into an array. Normally, uh, you could just divide and then minus 2 uh, on the fly and not have to store these things. But I want to make sure that, uh, that, that we get uh, uh, the benefit of a review out of this as well. It's not just uh, a race, because obviously we're, we're, we're nine days late on this anyway. Right? So I'm not going to race to the end. Uh, I'm not going to try to get to the leaderboards or anything. All right? So there's uh, 100 numbers. Uh, I've set up a, a program here, just a program shell, to get started. Uh, I'm probably going to want to open up that file. And you know what? Let me go ahead and make it more like Hack 14. And what I'll do is I'll make the first line the number of records that you actually have to read, because this is what you're doing in your hack right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up that file. F is equal to new, or not new, fopen. Right? And the file that we're going to want to open is I named it day101.txt. And it's in the same working directory. We'll open it up for what mode? Or what are we going to do with this file? Read it, so R. R is for reading. W is for writing. Right? It's an input file. Uh, you can do some basic error checking if you want, but I'll, I'll go ahead and skip that part. Uh, what I'm going to want to do is I want to read the first line. So the first thing I want to do is get a, uh, have a buffer, right? Char buff or buffer, right? And I'll, you know, none of these were more than a thousand characters long, right? At most, you know, ten characters because it's an integer. Uh, but I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and be more conservative here. One hundred. Right? Now, how do I read a line from the file? Forgets. Don't forget it's forgets. Right? You want to read it into the buffer. You want to read at most 100 minus 1 for the null terminating character characters. Uh, and then you want to read it from the file f. Right? And that will give you uh, that. Uh, now, what's stored in the buffer here is this first line, this 100. I want to convert that to an integer so that I can allocate memory to hold all the other 100 numbers for me. Right? So to do that, I will use int n is equal to, how do I convert a string to an integer? a to i of buffer. Right? Uh, at this point, we can test this and see if it actually works. Now printf uh, reading 100 num or 100 percent n numbers dot dot dot, and the line, oops, there we go. Uh, and then we'll see if we actually read n, n here uh, correctly. Uh, I need to actually be at the command line to do this. So uh, desktop uh, advent of code 2019. So GCC day 01.c. There we go. And of course, we could have taken that by, as a command line argument. And we, I can make that change if you want a review of that. Uh, but reading 100 numbers. OK, good. You know, Iterative development. Test what you have so far. Or write a function, test that function. And the only when you're sure or you have high confidence that that function is correct, then move on to the next thing. Okay? So now I'll move on to the next thing and actually read those numbers. One mistake that we're seeing over and over again is that nobody is respecting this first line. They just go into some while loop and read until the end of the file. Well, if there are 100 numbers here and I've got another 1,000 blank lines, right? that's not going to be valid data. The first line is telling you that there are only 100 records there, so only read 100 records. That tells me that maybe I want a for loop in, uh, instead of a while loop. i is less than n, i++. plus plus. For each one of these, we will read the next line, convert it to an integer, int x is equal to a to i of buffer. And then what do we do with that integer? Uh, we, uh, let, let's store it into an array. So let's go, uh, we, let's go ahead and create enough memory to hold 100 integers, or in general, n integers here. So int uh, a, a, a array, I'll say, uh, int star, and then a call to malloc, int or size of int, size of int times n. There we go. So that, uh, that allocates enough memory for, one, uh, for n integers. Uh, another common mistake that we're still seeing is people conflating integers and other data types with stru with uh, or structures with uh, strings. You only need plus one for the null terminating characters when it's strings. I'm not reading in strings. I'm reading. Uh, I'm, well, I am reading in strings, but then I'm converting them to integers. I'm storing integers. I don't need 101 of them. All right. All right. That looks good so far. Uh, now let's go ahead and say that array sub i is equal to x. Okay. And then we can, do, again, do a debugging and, and walk through and, or print these out and see if we get them all correct. What's one risk that I've got right here right now? I didn't take a real close look at those integers. But what if they're very large integers? 
what might occur? What might happen? What risk do I have? What if one of those integers is, say, 10 billion? Is that going to work? No. So it could be that uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe there's one integer there that is more than 2.147 billion. Right? Ugh. Well, I could go ahead. Uh, go, uh, if I don't care about finishing really quick, I could go ahead and take a look. Ooh, OK. Well, the, the largest ones seem to be like in the 100,000 uh, place here. Uh, I don't really have anything more than six digits here. So I'm, I'm safe here. I, I'm, I'm pretty uh, uh, sure that, uh, uh, that I'm going to be safe here. One thing that I could do if I really, really want to be cautious about this is I could check the buffer size. If there are so many digits, say nine digits there, uh, right? The 2.147 billion would be, well, if there are 10 digits, I still have to check to see is the first, you know, is it still too big? But certainly if it's more than 10 digits, or if the string is more than 10 plus the uh, n-line character, uh, 11 uh, characters long, certainly I'm not going to be able to handle that. Uh, so you might want to add some, some checks here, but that's OK. Right? Well, I'm, I, I just checked it uh, manually, and yeah, OK, there's nothing, nothing big there. Uh, and th that's why the thing, the things like creating a buffer that's only 100, that's reasonable, or 1,000 for the, uh, the assignment or whatever it might be. Those are reasonable assumptions for the, the given parameters that we give you. All right. All right, so there is my stuff read into memory. Uh, all right, well, uh, what else do I need to do now? I need to iterate through and sum them all up, uh, all of the uh, fuel requirements. The fuel requirements are going to be taking this number, divided by three, and then rounding down. But I don't have to round down because these are integers. And then subtract two off of it. So let me go ahead and go into another for loop for i equals 0, i is less than n, i plus plus. And I'll probably want a total, right? Int total. There we go. Uh, total plus equals. And I will simply take the array sub i, divide by 3, relying on truncation to take care of that for me, and minus 2. Now there's a, pro a potential problem with this. What's, wh what's the potential problem? Yeah, what, what, garbage, plus gar, uh, garbage plus one is what? Garbage. Right? If you start out with an uninitialized variable, what are you going to have? Garbage. Right? Now, it could be 9 times out of 10. It will be 0. Uh, but that 1% of the time that you can, uh, or 10% or whatever it might be, uh, that you actually get garbage out of that, that's when uh, it fails. And then, you'll, then you never remember why. And oh, yeah, I need to initialize my variables. Best practice all the time. All right? uh, printf total. Fuel is percent %d, right, and the line, and total. All right. All right. Oh, are we good? Oh, I, I, already got, I, I've already got that. But again, that, that'll just be a warning in, in the, say, the web grader or something like that. All right, let's run it. Total fuel is this thing right here. Another risk, even though each one of those individual values is small, if I've got 100 small values, that might end up being overflow. Do you think we have an overflow here? Like, the, at most, each one was le certainly less than a million, right? 100 times 1 million, that's 100 million. That's less than 2.147 billion, so we're good to go here. And I have high confidence that this number is correct. Before I submit that answer, right, let me th rethink this. What's another way that I can test this stuff? Say 01.test.txt. What if I take the values that they gave me, 12, 14, 1969, and this guy, 12, 14, 1969, and this guy, and then I ran it on this one instead? So dot test. Right. What should I expect? Is that cor the correct answer? Is that? 2 plus 2 plus 654, so 658 plus 658. Oops. Oh, yeah, that, uh, uh, that's not right, is it? Oh, duh. Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a problem with my input, uh, and there are four numbers. Thank you. All right, let's, uh, and now I don't need to recompile, I can just run it again. There we go. Uh, that's still wrong, right? I've got the wrong value where? 1,000. 
Oh, do I? Did I copy it wrong? Yeah, you grabbed that. That. And this is like Oh, oh, thank you. Uh, 658 though, right? Uh, there we go. All right, three, four, two, four, one. Hey, I have a reasonably high confidence that this actually works before I go and test it on their server, which is kind of like the web grader, right? It's a black box answer. It says, no. It's only, all it's going to tell me is I'm correct or I'm not correct, right? The only way that I can make it a non-black box, we call it white box, in other words, you can look inside of it. They should call it a clear box instead, uh, but, uh, uh, or a transparent box, opaque box. Those would be better terms, uh, more accurate terms. Uh, but this is the only way that I'm going to be able to know that if I do my own testing. So if I don't want to uh, be, you know, have, have the um, website chide me and say, uh, no, that's not the correct answer, uh, then maybe I need to uh, do my, some, some of my own testing, which is exactly what you should be doing for all of your assignments. Right? Sometimes we require it. Sometimes we force you to do that. Other times we've not, thinking that you know, the, 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 the forcing shows you that you need to do this, and then, uh, then you see that it's best practice and hopefully do it on your own from then on. There are going to be lots of situations in which you're not going to be required to test anything, uh, but you, you're going to want to because if you don't, then how do you know it's correct? Right? All right, what was the original answer, by the way? <laughs> All right, I, okay, I, I did that. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, cross my fingers here. That's right answer. Yay, I got one gold star. Right? That's what it looks like. Uh, you can continue to part two. Uh, the part two, and we will do this. Uh, basically, part two is the exact same answer, usually. Uh, although it hasn't changed, you can still get your puzzle input here. So I'm not going to have to, uh, and, and usually they give you the same uh, test inputs, too, although these look a little bit different. Usually it's something that, uh, the, the way that they've designed these things is usually so that if you, do, uh, if you do the first one in a hackish way, basically you have to go back and redo it anyway for the second part, uh, which is what a lot of our stuff has been designed like. Uh, hopefully you've noticed patterns throughout the semester that we had you do some file I.O. in Hack 10, read each line in, uh, in, in, into an array of uh, string characters, right? Uh, now you've probably seen three or four times where you can reuse that code, either directly or you can take that code, cut and paste it, and then modify it slightly, right? Uh, we had you do length split for a reason, so that you could split up that DNA in that other assignment, right? Uh, so lots of things that you can reuse. Once you've got a, a generic abstract solution that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that can be commonly reused, do so, right? Code reuse. That's the whole reason that we write functions anyway, so that we can reuse them. All right, so during the second go, no poll, go, uh, no go poll, uh, the elf in charge of the rocket equation double checker stops the launch sequence. Apparently, you forgot to include additional fuel for the fuel you just added. OK. So all the modules are taken care of, but you, of course, fuel requires fuel because you're still carrying mass. Fuel itself requires fuel just like any module. Take its mass, divide by 3, round down, subtract 2. However, that fuel also <laughs> requires more fuel. And that fuel requires fuel, and that fuel requires fuel, and so on. Uh, any mass would require negative. Uh, 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 any mass that would require negative fuel should be instead be treated as if it required zero fuel. Okay. Uh, so in other words, if you get down to a certain, if if if, if that that number th that uh, uh, divide by three minus two divide by three minus two, eventually you're either going to get down to zero, in which case you require no additional mass, or you go down below zero, in which case of course you ignore it, no additional ma uh, fuel required. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. if, uh, it is indeed handled by wishing really hard, <laughs> which has no mass and then is outside the scope of this calculation, blah, blah, blah. So for each fuel mass, calculate its fuel and add to the total. Then treat the fuel amount that you just calculated as input mass and repeat the process, continuing until a fuel requirement is zero or negative. For example, a module of mass 14 requires two fuel, just like before. This fuel requires no further fuel because 2 divided by 3 is rounded down to 0, and then subtract 2, it doesn't matter, we're already at 0. Okay? Uh, at first, the module 1969 requires 654 fuel, just like before. Then this fuel requires 216 more fuel because if you take divide by 3, and the, the, that's probably, uh, yeah, 54 it goes into it, yeah, uh, evenly. So minus 2, uh, that's 216. 216 then requires 70 more fuel, which requires 21 fuel, which requires 5 fuel, which requires no further fuel because 5 divided by 3 
is going to be, uh, and then tr uh, truncated is going to be 2. Minus 2 gets you 0. Uh, blah blah blah. All right, and then this, uh, and then this stuff right here. All right. So, what is the sum of the fuel requirements for all the modules in the spacecraft when also taking into account the mass of the added fuel? Calculate the fuel requirements for each module separately, then add them all up at the end. All right. Great. I don't want to lose my original answer, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this file, and I'll call it B. There we go. Uh, and I'll keep on the test for now because we've already got a, uh, a value for, uh, for this test, uh, which is going to be uh, 50,354. So we're going to go through the same process, test this, to make sure that we're right here. Okay? Uh, this is all going to be the same, uh, reading it in, so we can reuse that code. Uh, but this is where it's going to be different. It's not just a simple matter of this thing anymore. It's a, it's, we're going to have to recalculate this fuel. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this into a temporary variable here, int fuel. All right, there we go. All right. And what I'll do is, uh, so the suggestions here. What do I need to do? What, what, what does the explanation suggest here? I need what? OK, so this is check if it's 0, and if it's 0, then I stop. But what do I need to do before that? What did they do right here? You started out with, uh, what was it, 654. Then you divided that by 3, subtracted 2, got 216. Divide by 3, minus 2, got 70. Divide by 3, minus 2, got 21. Then 5, et cetera. And you kept a running total the entire time. That suggests what? Well, it could be recursion or just a regular old loop, right? So. Let's figure this out. Right? Uh, let's go ahead and write a function. Int fuel per module. All right? And what I'll do is I'll give it the mass of the module, or module mass. Okay? And then what I can do down here is I can, well, I can kind of ignore this now. I don't need a temporary variable anymore. I can say that total plus equals, uh, what do I call it, fuel per module. And then I'll pass in just that thing right there, OK? And now I don't have to touch this at all. We just have to figure it out for one instance, right? In other words, we can focus our attention on this one test case, this other test case, this other test case, et cetera, right? And I, uh, I only have to, uh, to worry about this now, OK? All right, so help me out. Let's find that first fuel, right? Int fuel, to uh, fuel is equal to Module mass, what was it? Divide by 3, minus 2. Okay? That's the first amount of fuel. In fact, if I were still on part A here, this is all I would do. Return the fuel and be done with it. But now I've got to have fuel for the fuel, and then fuel for that fuel for that fuel. Fuel, 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 et cetera. Right? Which kind of tells you, yeah, you can think recursively on this, or you can just think iteratively. So let me go ahead and create another variable here, int fuel total. And I'll set that equal to 0. Right. Fuel total plus equals fuel. Now I'll probably want to go into some sort of a loop. What kind of a loop do you want to do? While, OK. While some condition, then what I want to do is I want to calculate the fuel for the fuel. Right. Fuel is equal to? Fuel divided by 3 minus 2. Right? And then I'll want to add that fuel to the fuel total. total. There we go. Right? As long as it's still positive. Right? So, what's my condition here? When do I stop? When did we stop over here? 5, five divided by 3, that's going to be 2 minus 2 is 0. Right? Or uh, this one got uh, the other one got down to uh, some negative value. So while the fuel is greater than zero, continue. Right? Now we do have a problem here though. So let, let, let's walk through this uh, and let's fast forward here and say that we got down to five. Okay. Uh, so the fuel is five. It's greater than zero. We'll come in here. Fuel divided by three. That's going to be uh, then truncated. That's going to be. Uh, oh, sorry, one, right? 
three, no, uh, yeah, because well, it's 1.66, and so uh, rounded down, that's going to be 1. Minus 2, should I be adding that negative fuel? No. So let's go ahead and put an if condition here. If the fuel that we just calculated is positive, I mean, we can add 0 if you really want to. Uh, but if it's positive, then we'll go ahead and add in that fuel. Now, I don't want to return the fuel. I want to return the fuel total. Right? And if I want to do some, some more debugging here, what I can do is I can, uh, I can go ahead and put this into a variable, a temporary variable. Uh, int temp is equal to this. And then printf fuel <laughs> for fuel, <laughs> percent D and the line, uh, temp. There we go. And then I could add temp here. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and eliminate one, one function call. There's no reason to call the function twice. And we'll go ahead and add it into temp. I'm still on the testing input here, right? Yeah, good. So let's see if we're right. GCC, or no, it's a different file now. GCC day 01B. Right. Now I could go down here and 51, 3, 16, was that correct? Nope, that's not correct. No, that's oh. correct. oh, that's only the last one, thank you. Uh, well, then we can at least compare the last one. 50346, that looks good. Uh, 966, that looks good. And then 2 and 2. I think those are correct as well, right? Yeah, just from before. So I have a reasonably high confidence here that this is going to be correct. I don't need to come back here and add these up if you really, uh, you can do it if you really want to. Uh, but let's go ahead and just, you know, pull the trigger and say, all right, let's try it with our actual data. So the fuel total here is, now again, I want to make sure, do, do a sanity check here. This is only 4 million, right? Uh, and none of those input numbers exceeded uh, 1 million, so we're still uh, under here. This is still pretty good. Right? Uh, in fact, yeah, I'll, I'll make a comment here in a second after I'm done. Let's go ahead. I always cross my fingers. Is this correct? Yay, we got the right answer. So one try each, we got a gold star for each. You still get a gold star no matter how many times you do this. Uh, but you can share this. How, how do you share that on Twitter? Or what's Mastodon? Anybody know what Mastodon is? Uh, it's kind of like Twitter. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, then you can share it on Twitter. Uh, I can share it on Twitter. I, nobody shares day one, right? Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and look at the stats or leaderboards. Where is it? Okay, those are leaderboards. Uh, these are the stats. So how many people got the first part? Seventy-one thousand, and over the next month or so, it'll uh, it'll probably increase. But we're in the uh, we're already in the elite here. We uh, only 10, 9,000 other people have done this. So great job, everyone. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we could go to another year here to see what it looks like, like 2018. Uh, what did their stats look like? All right, there. Uh, so you can see that there's some days that were particularly hard. Only 30, uh, 35, 35 people, that's it. Oh, 35 silver. No, 35 silver, silver means that they did the first part, but not the second part. Uh, so 35 people did the first part, but didn't do the second part. So you can tell that, well, it's just as easy as the first part or hard as the first part. Uh, but uh, yeah, I got all, uh, all, all 50 stars that year. So I was uh, in a group of 2,600 people. Uh, and uh, oh, oh, it looks like it's getting more popular each year. So already we've exceeded the 67,000 from last year. Was that right? How many are, oh yeah, already we've, we've hit that total this year. So you have plenty of exercises. You can go back. Uh, this is the fifth year, I believe, the fifth anniversary. You can go back all the way to the beginning and see uh, what, what, and do, the, do day one all, all over again for all five years as practice if you want to. Uh, all right. All right. Any questions on that? No? How, it only took us 30 minutes here to do this. So maybe if, what, what, if, what, if, what if we wanted to do it recursively? What would that look like? Int fuel per module recursive int module mass. OK. In fact, I'll just put in fuel. All right? There we go. Uh, what, would, what would it look like? This is a good exercise right here. Let's force ourselves to think about recursion. Right? Instead of a, we're, we're basically doing a loop, but we're doing it with respect to recursion. We're going to be abuse the stack space to do our, uh, our uh, dirty work for us of checking to see if this is still positive. Right? This is my termination condition. Termination condition is the first thing you do in recursion. 
you look at the base case. If the fuel is less than zero, then return, or less than or equal to zero, then return zero. Nothing more to add. And no more recursive calls. Otherwise, what would we do? Return, or let's, let's compute the fuel. Int uh, needed fuel is equal to fuel divided by 3 minus 2, right? Well, that's how much you need, but now we need more, right? Because this needed fuel, we need fuel for that fuel, and then fuel for that fuel, etc. until we get to where? Until we get to something negative up here. So make a recursive call. Return, return, needed fuel plus however much fuel you need for that needed fuel. All right, there we go, needed fuel. There we go, there. That should be all we need for recursion here. Uh, now let's go down here and see if it actually works. It's not fuel per module. Now, uh, now I have to think about the first iteration of this because if we give the mass, the fuel and the mass are the same thing basically. Uh, so I think that we're good here if we do it this way. Remember that we got this number, 4822249. Somebody remember that for me because I'm not going to. And let's see if we get the same thing. Hey, I think that was right. All right, 48, oops, 4822119. Is that it? Oh, it's not the right one. What is it? What was wrong? 49. <coughs> How much are we off then? Thirty. All right. Well, let's switch back to the test. Crowdsource it here. Tell, uh, let's uh, let's let's do the test one first. So zero zero. Uh, let's go with go back to the exercise. You can always go back to the exercise and get everything again. Uh, let's see. It should be zero zero and then nine six six and then fi fifty thousand four uh, three hundred. Blah blah blah. All right, we're off by two here, and we're off by one here. Did I get them all right? Divide by three, minus two. If the fuel is less than or equal to zero, return zero. That looks right to me. You're right. All right, so if needed, we can have another, well, I'll put the other base case here. If uh, needed fuel, is less than or equal to zero, then let's not do recursion. We'll just simply return needed fuel. I think that that, was, that will work else. And then I can actually restructure my base case up there. Yeah, I don't need this base case anymore. I can go ahead and say, there's the needed fuel. If the needed fuel is less than or equal to zero, then return, not needed fuel, return what? zero, right? Because we, if it's negative, we don't want to return that, so it's zero. And there we go, I think. All right. Let's run that again. Does that look better? 966346. Yay. That looks a lot better. So you see what I, w I did there? That uh, uh, I computed the needed fuel from the fuel that we were given or the mass that we were given. And if that's less than or equal to zero, I, that's where I stop. Uh, so the, sometimes the base case is not the first thing you do, but it, it's definitely done before you uh, do any uh, recursive version here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, switch it back to the actual live data, recompile, and let's run it again. And is that the correct answer? Okay, good. All right. All right. Any more questions or any, uh, anything else, uh, variations, uh, other variations that we want to do in this? Because, uh, what is this? The, the, he, he basically takes a lot of stuff uh, from, from known problems and hides it. Uh, for example, I think that this is, is this the capper car numbers? You remember the capper car numbers in your, first uh, in your first hack or your first assignment where you had to fix stuff? Capper car, no, not capper car numbers. What is it called? Is it? No, the Capricorn number you split it up right into two things. This is this is a this is a conjecture. What what was the conjecture called? 
Does anybody remember what the conjecture was called? Uh, it's, it's where you uh, divide by 3, subtract 2. Mm. It's not exactly, I guess, maybe. It, it, it's, what is it called? There's like an acronym for it. Does anybody know? Pogo or Poco or something like that? You, uh, you, you, uh, you uh, it, it's a little bit different uh, in that uh, it's, a, it's a sequence that so if it's even, then you multiply it by 3 uh, and subtract 2 or something. And if, you, uh, if it's odd, then you, you, you decrement it somehow. And the, the conjecture is that it'll always eventually reach 0, that it'll never, it'll never, it's not a divergent sequence. Uh, and that's what it reminds me of. So it is a little bit different in that uh, you will always get to 0 guaranteed here. Right? It's pretty obvious that if you're always divided by 3 and subtracting 2, you're eventually going to get down to 0 or less. Right? But it's, uh, I, that's going to kill me. I'm going to have to post some Piazza uh, uh, later on. Uh, it, it, well, I mean, it's a convergent sequence, but I forget what it was called. Darn it. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's some mathematician's conjecture. Uh, and, of course, the conjecture has been verified for very large numbers, but there's no proof of it. Uh, it's, a, it, 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 it's just a mathematical thing, right? I, uh, I sometimes I uh, uh, give it as an exercise uh, to not to prove the, uh, the the conjecture, of course, because nobody's proven the conjecture, but to verify it for particular inputs. Right? Does anybody uh, find out what it was? Is it the Colatz? Colatz conjecture. Thank you. It's the Colatz conjecture. Colatz. Con I misspelled his name. Colatz conjecture, and I forget what the. Uh, uh, 3 plus 1 conjecture. Ooh, I'm conjecture. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, you know, it's only famous because, like a lot of stuff, it's only famous because he offered $500 for a proof or something. Where is it? What, what is it? Pogo or Pogo or something? Yeah, that's what it is. And then you can verify the conjecture uh, for particular numbers. By, by coming up with a sequence for which it just goes to zero. All of the sequences go to zero. That's the conjecture. All right. All right. Then again, I'll be doing this uh, day two. I'll do tomorrow in my office, though. Uh, I'll be live streaming it on YouTube. Uh, I think that the, uh, uh, it, it's going to be up there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's just the, my regular YouTube address and then slash live. Uh, and then uh, this will go live. If you want to, you can come in. I, I don't think I restrict any uh, access here. You can go ahead and come in and uh, uh, type and ask questions or give helpful suggestions like you did today if I screw up. All right. All right.